Let me guess. You've just purchased a small robot kit, such as the Runt Rovers from ServoCity.com, and now you're faced with the question, what do I do with it? How do I control it? Luckily for you, I'm here to answer that question. Why me? Because I've got... The goal of this show is to answer the age-old question, how do I control my robot? In this first episode, we'll be walking through a more traditional RC style setup. And since I don't come from an, a traditional RC background, I've wrangled my friend and colleague, ServoCity.com's own Kyle the Smile Lewis to help me out with this video. Kyle, what components do we need to make a traditional transmitter receiver setup work for a small to medium sized robot? Okay, I've actually picked up some components on the way in. So for starters, we have a motor controller. Um, this motor controller is a two channel, five amp, and that's good for the Runt Rover series of robots. So you have the motor controller that you're gonna tie the motors into, and then you're gonna have a receiver that is gonna be sending a signal to the RoboClaw motor controller. And so those two are gonna be linked together. You're gonna have a battery to power both of those. And then you're gonna have your wireless link to your receiver, which is gonna be the handheld device called a transmitter. And it's gonna be sending a signal to the receiver for the motor controller to pick up and operate the motors. Okay, so you've got transmitter sending the signal to your receiver. This is plugged into your motor controller and being powered by your, your battery, of course. Um, so what kind of cost are we looking at for, for all this? Just in general, ballpark figure. Uh, ballpark figure on a setup like this is gonna be somewhere just shy of $200. Okay. And battery life, what are we talking? What kind of batteries do we, do we need to power something on this scale? Okay. Um, really, you won't need too much battery for the, um, the Runt Rover series of robots. Um, this is going to be a little LiPo battery. It's got 600 milliamps, so something like that would probably run it for, um, let's say, two to three hours if you're um, operating the motors quite a bit. Really, the motors don't pull much. Um, All together, they probably pull a quarter of an amp. So. Um, you know, a small battery is going to run it for a long, long time. And so this uh, transmitter receiver combo from Tactic, uh, what kind of range are we talking about getting on these? The 2.4 gig systems are really good anymore. Um, you've gotten away from the crystals and trying to match up numbers between the transmitter and receiver. So number one, it's a lot easier to link up. Um, if you have a receiver from another package, uh, say you have multiple robots and you have a bunch of different receivers, um, you can just turn it on, punch the link, link button, and they're going to talk to one another and link up. But as far as the range, um, you know, we always say about a half mile line of sight. I've actually seen them work for much, much further than that. Um, but, you know, the, the number kind of varies. If you get online and research that, you may find shy of a half mile or a lot greater than that. But Sure, you're next to an ways. airport. There's going to be a lot of... RF interference or something's gonna be less, but a half a mile, right. that's, you know, something this size, you're not even gonna see the robot right. that far away, so that's pretty good. So why did you pick this particular motor controller, the uh, little RoboClaw motor controller? Well, I picked the RoboClaw, it's a two channel, five amp motor controller, um, because we have to use two channels in order to make this little guy run. You've got your left side motors and your right side motors, and you wanna run those independently in order to steer left and right, kinda like a tank would. Um, so, wiring is simple. Uh, the pinouts are already on the board, so you can grab a male to male servo lead, link it over to your receiver in order to connect those. Um, and then setting the modes is pretty easy on this board as well. There's some little buttons on here that you can just punch the button, cycle through different modes, and pick the one you want. Uh, the other nice thing about this is uh, it's got a LiPo cutoff. So if you're using a lithium polymer battery, you can set it to whatever battery you have, whether it's a 2S or 3S, and it's going to shut it down at 3 volts per cell. So it's going to protect your LiPo and make sure that you can recharge that um, once you're done driving your robot around. So there are cheaper, smaller boards available, but this one's more full featured. And I think the LiPo cutoff is a pretty big deal because you don't want to burn out your LiPo. It is. You see a lot of people that just kind of plug them in and they'll run a LiPo until it's almost all the way discharged. And then all of a sudden they've got a, you know, a dead battery. You're not going to be able to recharge it. 
and you might as well cut the leads off and throw it in the trash. Um, so that's kind of nice on this one. The other thing that's pretty cool is it has some LEDs on there that you can see when it's receiving the signal. Um, you can see when there's an error code, so maybe you got a, a wire flipped around backwards or something like that. You can kind of diagnose that on your own. Great. Well, let's do a little demo. Um, and it's worth noting that we're going to do an instructable for every episode that we put together. And we'll put a little wiring diagram together, even though it's pretty straightforward. But we'll kind of just walk you through it real simple if you've never put this uh, system like this together before and kind of show you what connects where for this particular recipe. There you go. Very fine grain control, I see. Yeah, so I'm not going to drive it too fast in fear of falling off the table, but indeed. you can see you can drive it around pretty easily. So, the other cool thing on the Roboclaw that I didn't mention, it has a built in BEC. So, what that means is basically it's sending voltage back to the receiver as well. Uh, so even though I'm putting in 11 volts um, going to the motors, it's only sending 5 volts back to your receiver. So it's a nice safe voltage to run your wireless radio system on. Could you use a, that particular uh, Rebel Claw motor controller with an Arduino as well? Yeah, um, if you wanted to change the mode and run like an analog signal input, you know, just straight from a potentiometer or if you were, wanted to run an Arduino, um, you know, there's tons of different modes on there. There's a uh, quite the booklet that you can read through if you really want to get into this and use it for other robotics projects. All right, thanks for uh, taking the time to come on the show and answer all my questions. Thanks for having me. Control Issues is brought to you by Robot Zone, inventing the parts for your ideas, and ServoCity.com, the place to go to buy the parts for your projects. If you've got questions or ideas for future episodes, Send an email to tech at servocity.com.